up everyone? Ben Barrows, aka Random Crown here for the final table of the $27 6 Max Turbo Progressive KO on Poker Stars. We've already played a few hands and had one player bust. So now we are down to five. If you guys haven't seen any of the videos leading up to this, I recommend checking them out so you're all caught up as to where we're at. Deuce Queen in the BB. Facing a raise from the button. We 3 bet To put them in a tough spot. Because they have more chips than the small blind, who is more likely to bust soon. So we figure they're going to be raising wider on the button. So we three bet to yeah, just put some pressure on them. And we made a small sizing look stronger. But again, since this tournament, I've grown a lot as a player, and I recognize this is not GTO whatsoever. We're giving them pretty good odds to call and position, and that's not what we want with queen deuce off out of position, dude. Yeah, like playing a bloated flop with. Yeah, just like a hand that doesn't make straights or flushes, you know, has horrible pair equity, like so many reverse implied odds against, you know, higher queens. And the deuce just is meaningless. And we get a 6 4 3 rainbow board and just bet massively small to look super strong. Like 1 6 pod, and somehow they fold. And the plan there is to barrel off on some turns and rivers. Alright, six to the small boy. We're cool, a check. We got ace, queen, jack, two hard board. They bet on the ace turn, which we figure they just would have raised, they would have raised an ace pre. Could have a queen or a jack. But I figured that they'll be betting some air too, and they were indeed betting their draw, and they just get their air on the river. Ace Queen on the button. Very easily open. BB3 bets, and we yam. Yeah, East Queen, just too good to not go with there. They'll be through it fully enough. Could be even through it calling with the East Jack, which is kind of loose, but some people do it. And yeah, like even when we get it in against their, the better part of the range, we're gonna be flipping a lot. Now we Ace Jack, we steal the blinds, now we have Ace Queen again in the BB. Facing this cutoff open. We just shift it in. Oh, 24 BB effective, they pull. We limp the small blind, BB checks. We bet they call on the 7 eye board. We check the king turn and then we just over bet the river because we figure that they don't have a flush much. They probably have 7x, 4x, maybe deuce x. Maybe, f maybe they paired the 5, they had some sort of straight draw. But. They surely would have bet the turn if they had a king, which is, I think, the main reason why we decided to bet here. Since we could easily have a king, they probably don't. We could easily have a flush, because, yeah, they probably would have bet the turn of the flush. Um, and definitely two pair sets. So... We can just figure them to have a weaker hand, and they just can't really handle the heat of an overbet, so that's why we put the pressure on. Again, 
this is a very experimental tournament. Not saying that a lot of this is the best play by any means. We're just doing some different stuff. So we could talk about it later. Figure out what exactly is optimal. Because there's so many different ways to play hands. It's fun just doing them in the you unconventional know, ways sometimes just to really see if there's any merit in it. So we have an interesting spot here, other queen three. We open the button. Beauty defends. We got nine six king two club board. We have less the third pot. I did call. Ten on the turn. Gives us a straight draw. We just check back. And we get an ace of clubs on the river. It's actually a really good one for us to bet. So we bet less than a half pot, making it look like we have value. We're just repping like a pair of aces. Yeah, like ace queen, ace jack, ace eight. Ace 10 even, Ace 6, Ace 9, yeah, I mean, could definitely be betting a lot of Ace X hands. And then it's Ace of Clubs, which brings in the flush, so we could easily have a flush here as well. But they just call us down the second pair, their flush blocker, which is standard. They're getting pretty good odds to do so, which is why I like an overbet bluff there more, because then they'll be more inclined to fold second pair type hands. We just open 10-5 suited on the cutoff, get it through. Just keeping the pressure on now that we have the chip lead. And now we have king-5 suited in the small blind. We just ship it. Four. Uh, 15 blinds, take it down. We king six off on the button, easy open. Maybe ships, easy fold. King queen now. On the cutoff, easy open. Small blind, 3x, 3 bets, now it becomes a standard muck. 7 9 suited. Maybe. Yeah, and since they, when they 3x, they just have like nutted hands. King Queen just doesn't play very well against them. Flop, straight draw. Check, check. King on the turn. Easy fold to the delay C bet. Yeah, the King really connects with their range. 40 suited in the small blind. Complete BB checks. Flop bottom pair on this ace deuce a two spade board. Check check three spades in the turn. We min match. Yeah, I, I I guess the reason why we bet the turn is to just get value from. Like single spade type hands, like king six, like the six of spades, queen seven, seven spades, and then like, yeah, that's about it. Guess we could get like four x or five x to come along for the straight draw value. Don't know how often they actually do that though. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I guess we're just betting to like get, yeah. Just, equity to fold as well, like, you know, queen eight, you know, king nine, just hands that have higher cards than ours that could, you know, pair up in the river. So I guess that's why we bet here. Again, doing a lot of unconventional stuff. I think it's fine to just try and check it down as well. And then we fortunately just river two pair. And 
unfortunately, actually, because they actually had two pair themselves. A higher one. Nice hand. We could raise the 10 6 suit on the button. I think it'd be good. But I think that since both the blinds cover us and there's a shorter stack left, they'll just put more pressure on us. So it's fine for that reason. We have 6 on the cutoff. Just jam it in for a little less than 15 bigs. Get through. King Queen in the BB. Facing this 2.5x open for another gun. We defend. We get a Queen 10 4 all spade board. And we just decided to check min raise on this queen high board. Just get it in against some sort of missed draw. Wow, king high flush draw and the straight draw. So we have a pretty sick hold to get back in this thing. Wow, dude, like we we were playing kind of like a donk, honestly. That was a really weird check min raise call. Like, what, dude, what? Especially with small blind stack. I think it's better to just check call the flop. I guess the reason why we check min raise is to just induce some sort of weird three bet all in with like a mediocre draw, kind of like what they had, to be honest. But I think that's just too ambitious of a play. I think we're just gonna get it in behind a lot as well. I mean, I guess, you know, they have queen jack, they probably get it in. But I think it, they're more likely to stack off or get it in if we just check ship it, and then we can rip a draw rather than check min raise, which looks more nutted. So yeah, I mean, not a huge fan of this line. Somehow they got it in with worse, and we held them. Man. Yeah, man, played this tournament so strangely. Under the gun. Opens, BB gets it in, and doubles up. Six five here in BB. Easy luck. Queen four suited on the cutoff. Easy out. Lines seven six here. Small blind. We complete BB checks. Flat bottom pair. And check it down. River trips and min bit for value. Do not. Now we have 6 5 suited here on the button. We open. Small one shifts as we fold. Queen's here on the cutoff. We open easily. Small one shifts it. Now we snap call. Get a 10 5 9 2 diamond board. And we hold against the ace and 6. Now we get a 9-5, we have to fall against the on pink button, 5-8 on the button now. And we open, and BB calls, we get a king-queen-7 rainbow board. We bet about a fourth pot, take it down. Ace-9, looks like we just get a walk. Ace-queen. We limp to induce, they check, get a 10 5 3 2 diamond board. We again check to induce, figuring our ace high to be good. Just bet the king turn. Again, just trying to fold out equity. Now we have ace 3. We shift the blinds to raise the button. Queen 5 off in the BB. Small blind, 2.5x. We could defend, it would be fine. But, decided to let it go. Ace 10. 
distributed blind versus blind, BB calls, and somehow we just went with Ace-10-I, I they call us King-5. Yeah, this is quite the theme of this tournament, people just calling us with worse hands, blind versus blind. Well, yeah, we had Queen-8 against Jack-7, we had, like, Ace-4 against King-8, and yeah, there we have our Ace-10 against King-5. Now we have 6-9 the BB. Button limps, we queen three days of regular board. We lead, they fold. And I think it's fine to just start leading a lot of just random boards heads up. Just because neither player in a situation is going to connect with the board that often. So usually, like the pot usually just gets shipped to whoever bets first. And we have kings, and they just open ship it. Easiest call ever. Get a 6 6 deuce rainbow. Ace on the turn, though, probably is what sucks out against us. Indeed, they do have the ace and the deuce. Nice hand. Now we have ace 8 on the button. We min open. BB flats. We have queen 7 5, 2 diamond board. We easily bet. Around a quarter pot. Just take it down. Protect our equity. 7 jack now on the BB. They open to the minimum. We defend. King 6 deuce, 2 diamond board. An easy check fold to their seat. Board. Six is now on the button. We easily open. They defend. Get an easy king five to club board. Check check. Turn pairs to five. We get a BB lead. We call. And we're good. Yeah, it's just eight nine. Button 2.5 X's, so 8 6 becomes a pretty easy fold. A king 10 the button. Mid open. B8 defends. Get a jack 3 7 rainbow board. We min bet and they call. We turn top pair. Min bet again for value. They call. And we get a obviously 6 of the river. And we bet a little more normal this time, a little more than a half pot, and they just fold. That's what we min bet. We're able to milk value easier. Now we get ace nine, and the BB just folds to us. Ace king suited on the button. We open, they ship it, dip it. We call. And river Broadway. Which wasn't even necessary. We were already ahead of the ace ten, and we higgy hold for the shivy dip of the twenty seven dollars six max to a progressive KO. This is the fourth time we won this tournament. <laughs> Which is probably why we were playing kind of sloppily and just doing some unconventional stuff just because like we've won this so many times let's try and win it a different way but to be honest like whenever i win this tournament i'm playing in a strange fashion i play very overly aggroly very i'm a very active player and i do a lot of image skewing you know i play bad on purpose to throw off the other people at the table so they just think that i'm a player who doesn't really think that in depth about hands and just is spewy you know and it's just prone to just do weird you know like incorrect stuff and once you can cultivate that type of image about yourself and you have the greater awareness of not being that kind of player but you know understand that other players perceive you like that you can rise above it and play off of it and have even more of an edge because of it. So that is the, the rationale behind playing overly loose and doing this unconventional stuff. May not be the best approach, but there is some sort of thought process behind it. 
Now, having said that, and having, you know, really... gone about like a GTO approach otherwise, say just trying to play more standard, trying to play more GTO is probably best, but I think there are situations where, you know, doing this meta type stuff, you know, like cultivating a spewy image on purpose to get action in the future has a lot of merit, and I think in some situations, yeah, it could be best. But I think in general, it's best to just stick to the standard approach, just play GTO, play your ranges, you know, and just print money long term. So yeah, this is a good hand history to go through because it's an alternative way to, you know, the GTO strategy that we'll be basing most of our poker lessons on in this channel. So yeah, this is a good one to just mix it up and just kind of give some perspective on things. You know, like this is an alternative way to play, but it's not necessarily the best. And it's, yeah, it's kind of spewy. Like this is like kind of more of an example of how not to play. Like there's some good hands here for sure. It was interesting you know, just to see how to win a tournament, but you know, we definitely played some hands suboptimally. So what's important is that we recognize that and learn from them. And uh, yeah. Yeah, this has been this has been a fun one to go through. So, uh, yeah, this concludes the twenty-seven dollar six max turbo progressive KO hand history review. Again, hope you guys learned a thing or two, and at the very least, just had some fun. And uh, yeah, this concludes the MTT hand history review videos that we'll be working on for the immediate time being. The next series of videos on the list is sit and goes, 180s, 45s, 90 mans, 18 mans. Just gonna go through a bunch of HHs that I've won in the $7 to $15 range and for the 18 mans and 45s. And then for the 180s, the 3Rs, the 8s, and the 15s. And then for the 90 mans, we have the $5 and $11 progressives. So we'll be working on those whenever there's an opportunity, and we'll update the channel when they're ready, and then tweet it out. And once those are ready, we'll have like a pretty solid library, and we'll start hyping up the channel a bit more, and then just you know keep gradually adding more and more videos to it. The mindset videos are coming too, to keep an eye out for them. Only so much time in the day, but the content is slowly growing. But yes, this officially concludes the final table review. I know you guys don't really hear me ramble on about all this stuff. That's what the, the next vlog is for, which I'll go record soon. So um, yeah, again, thank you guys for joining me. Hope you have become a better poker player because of this. Feel more informed. And, uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Shippity-dip out.